On today's show, Google's Arm Waymo bids farewell to those little tiny pod cars. Tesla says it will offer Model 3 test drives to reservation holders by the end of this year. And BMW's investment arm spends big on electric buses. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's brand new Ecotech Roundup show, brought to you by New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned, we're serious about clean, green, renewable energy. Have you switched? Head to ecotricity.co.nz to join today. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining us. Late last year and early this, British firm Jaguar began to showcase its first ever all-electric model in the form of the Jaguar I-PACE concept car. Designed as a crossover SUV, the I-PACE is essentially Tesla's answer to the Tesla Model X, complete with electric all-wheel drive and four second or less 0 to 100k sprint time. Well, this week, Jaguar confirmed that the I-PACE has now officially entered production, with plans to officially launch the car this autumn at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Customers in Europe will be able to get their hands on one shortly thereafter, with markets outside Europe due to get the car in 2018. There's no word on pricing yet, but given Jaguar isn't exactly an affordable brand, don't expect the I-PACE to be far off a Model X in terms of cost. They've been a part of the Waymo, nay, Google self-driving car project program now, for several years, offering a curious view into a future where cars, free from the need of traditional steering wheels or controls, don't have to look like cars. But this week, we heard the tiny pod-like autonomous electric cars developed exclusively for the firm's autonomous vehicle program, known as koalas, fireflies, or gumdrops, depending on whom you ask, are to be retired, with future development focused on commercializing its autonomous vehicle technology for mainstream automakers, rather than building its own low-speed autonomous pods for cities. I'm sad to see those little pods go, but I'm hopeful that Waymo's autonomous drive program will continue to grow and improve as time passes. With the Tesla Model 3 due to enter into production in the next few months, we're seeing an increase in excitement from Tesla reservation holders as they get ever close to sitting behind the wheel of their brand new electric car. And this week, Tesla changed the language on the Model 3 portion of its website to confirm that test drives to reservation holders will begin to take place towards the end of 2017, reminding existing and new customers that those wanting a test drive of a Model S or Model X wouldn't have to wait at all. Another clear anti-sell tactic for Model 3, if you ask me. This comes on the back of the announcement made last week at Tesla's annual shareholder meeting that the firm will only offer a choice of color and wheel configuration when production starts on Model 3 later this year. Of course, Kiwis will have a lot longer to wait because Tesla has already said right-hand drive markets won't get their Model 3s until well into 2018 or later. Sorry. While we're on the subject of Tesla, when it first unveiled its supercharger network, CEO Elon Musk noted that Tesla's ultimate goal would be to power as many of its supercharger stations from solar power as possible, perhaps even making the supercharger stations energy net positive, feeding energy generated but not used on site back to the local utility grid. That's not really happened yet, save for a few supercharger sites, but this time last week, Tesla CEO Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter that the company plans to convert all of its supercharger sites to solar power, outfitting them with photovoltaic solar panels and Tesla power packs to reduce the strain on the local utility grid. It's not clear what the time frame is here, but Musk has said that the end goal is to actually disconnect the majority of supercharger sites from the grid completely. That not only means Tesla supercharger networks will be completely carbon zero, but will also work independently from the grid, and they should work whatever happens. Although I'm not so sure about snow. Hmm. In the plug-in world, BMW is known for its i3 and i8 plug-in models, as well as an increasing range of plug-in hybrid variants to establish mainstream models, something I'm sure you will have seen an advert about recently, if you live in the US. But this week, BMW iVentures, BMW's investment arm, made a substantial investment in California electric bus company Proterra. 
The exact investment isn't known, but BMW, along with several other companies, including Al Gore's Generation Investment Management, form part of the $55 million six-round funding for the bus company, which has a 60% market share in the US and is currently working on longer-range buses and autonomous vehicle tech. I don't have the time to go into the investment here, but there is a more in-depth analysis from me from earlier on this week in the video playlist, so add it to yours when you're done here. It's been the subject of extreme speculation for the past few years, but last week at the Worldwide Developer Conference in San Francisco, Apple CEO Tim Cook confirmed that not only is Apple working on autonomous vehicle technology, but it sees it as one of the company's core technologies moving forward. Anyone who's kept an eye on the various permits being issued by the California DMV for autonomous vehicle testing will know that the cat has been out of the bag for Apple since April. But Cook's confirmation lets us know that Apple's self-driving car program isn't some skunkworks project anymore. As to where it'll go, well, Cook didn't say, but did note that for now, Apple wants to see where its autonomous vehicle technology takes it. Of course, unlike some companies, Apple is so flush with cash that it can drop several billion dollars on such a program and not even notice. So this is going to be a very interesting project to watch indeed. Like my home nation of the UK, New Zealand is known for being a sea-loving nation, producing some of the world's best sailors and fastest sailing boats. I mean, just check out these impressive shots of Team New Zealand harnessing everything they can out of the wind on the 35th America's Cup. But it's not just Kiwis at sea who know how to harness the wind. Check out the revolutionary thin air wind turbine from Kiwi company Powerhouse Wind, which is capable of generating as much power as 10 Tour de France cyclists at full bore, yet just has one, yes, one blade. The idea is pretty simple. By using one blade instead of three, the thin air is more quiet than a triple-bladed counterpart, generating up to two kilowatts of peak power. We love it here at Ecotricity New Zealand and think it will make the perfect complement to a roof-mounted photovoltaic panel system, so check it out. There's a link below in the show notes. Safety not electric vehicle range or performance, has long been said to be Tesla's top priority, with the Tesla Model S setting new high standards for luxury vehicles and any car for that matter, when it underwent crash testing at launch. Well, now it's the turn of the Tesla Model X, which was awarded a five-star safety rating across the board from the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration this week, becoming the first ever SUV to do so. Of the tests, Tesla said that the large lithium-ion battery pack found under the floor of every Model X means that the car is the most stable SUV on sale, with a lower rollover risk, in fact, the lowest rollover risk of any SUV to date. The only car to beat the Model X in crash testing? Well, that will be the Tesla Model S, setting a very high level of expectation that Tesla will need to get its Model 3 in that same high-ranking five-star category too. Given past experience, I think it'll happen, don't you? And finally, you might be forgiven for thinking that the humble car tire has pretty much devolved as much as it will, except for perhaps compound tweaks here and there to improve tread wear, road holding, and fuel economy. But this week, Michelin unveiled a brand new concept tyre that hints at what the tyre of the future might be like. And it's quite something. A 3D printed organic based tyre that's tubeless and airless, can't blow out or puncture, and is constantly feeding back data about grip, wear, and road conditions to the car itself to improve traction, user experience, and fuel economy. It's quite the concept, and I have no idea if it will ever reach production, but I've included a link below so you can check it out for yourself after the end of the show. Which it's good timing because it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. Enjoy your weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And until next time, hug a tree. <laughs> Bye.